Hello, and welcome to the latest. The, this is number seven in a series of, I think there's 12 or 13 lead generation webinars that we have put together uh, from, for Go Leads uh, Marketing Solutions. My name is Greg Chambers, and I'm part of Go Leads and uh, MNC Information Systems. And the topic for today's list in the, in the series of 13, this one is about mailing lists. Uh, it's how this uh, Go Leads was founded uh, 20 years ago on mailing lists, and they still work. And uh, what's been interesting is that as we set these webinars up, the some of the webinar topics, Facebook, LinkedIn, some of the uh, newer, uh, I'll say sexier topics, they get a, a, just a, a ton of registrations, you know, 70, 100. And um, some of the other topics are maybe not as popular, and they maybe get 20 to 25 uh, people who register to uh, attend the webinar. This one, you're part of a select group, let's just say. <laughs> so something that's uh, worthwhile to us and we think it's still an important topic, you are uh, like, like the Marines, right? The few, the proud, the Marines, we're gonna talk about 10 ways to get the most from your list. And this will actually encompass more than just traditional mailing lists, which we sell. Um, We'll go beyond that, so let me get to the right place here. What we'll do is um, we, we're running through the introductions, and then I'm gonna go through 10 ways, but I split them into three main groups. They are, uh, we'll talk about a group of list types and how to use them, excuse me. Um, we'll talk about profiling um, and how to use lists to help with uh, customer profiling, and then appending information to lists to get uh, I guess to make them, to get more out of them. And then we'll wrap up by talking about um, cost justification is uh, really the easiest way to break that up. So without further ado, well, I guess before I begin, if there are any questions, the place to ask is the webinar chat. Today I'm flying solo. So uh, if you have a, a chat question, you can send it to me or there's a Q&A and I'll be monitoring that but uh, I have a tendency to talk and look, look off in the distance. So I'll get to your question and I'll make sure to pause as we get to each one of them. But without further ado, this should take somewhere between uh, 20, 30 minutes. We've got Denver Bronco colors here. So I'm excited about that. 10 ways, uh, we'll talk about uh, five of the 10 ways. We'll talk about compile it, raise your hand, the big show, size matters, wait, you too? And then we'll go into the robots, lookalikes, the inside list, hold me back, and what you make it. So let's jump into the first one, compile it. Compilation lists, which is how we built our business, are basically, right, it's, it's a form of, we take a lot of public information, um, we bump a bunch of other sources into it, like uh, association directory information, and then um, public information to come up with a list. The way to get the most out of these lists, the, the, the people are attracted to them, first of all, because they tend to be inexpensive. And the reason they're inexpensive is because they are built on sources like this, right? So we may be able to append information into them to make them more useful, like more useful than just the yellow pages. We can say, here's all the categories that people fit in in the yellow pages. As a matter of fact, here's their government. Now that we have their public information, here's their government classification. Here's what their employee size is, either reported at some, uh, in some place or what we can discern, but it's designed to save time, right? It's, it's really a 5,000 foot view. So to get the most out of these lists, um, let me give you uh, an example. Uh, if you work in, let's say I'm in Douglas County, uh, Nebraska. And so I know Douglas County pretty well, a compiled list. If I went through it point by point, I might come away thinking, especially if I were going door to door, I might come away thinking this thing is not terribly accurate because I can see with my own two eyes right here what this information is and it doesn't match what's in the, the business profile. Uh, so it's really not meant for that. You'd be better off served with a, a different type of list. But if you are new to an area, so I get uh, assigned Douglas County, I don't know, Illinois, and I've got to go to Douglas County, Illinois, and I have no information, I have no place to start then this information becomes vitally interest, interesting to me. So as a sales rep, the easiest way to look at that information, right, is just what do, who do I start with first? 
and uh, where do I start? Or if I'm going up to the door, is there any way that I have, you know, is there any information I have in here that will help me at least start a conversation, even if it's wrong? And so in this case, it's I have 0% knowledge of this new territory. But now with this list, let's say I have 70% knowledge of what's going on in this territory, and it helps me attack the place faster. Um, marketing uses uh, compiled lists quite a bit too because they can get broader coverage. Um, in many cases, it doesn't really matter if 100% uh, of the list is 100% accurate because I'm trying to spread the word, so I'm trying to get impressions of the brand out there and right, uh, some of the seed as, as it's cast will fall, will fall on the cement, others will find fertile ground and grow. So way number one to get the most out of lists is to understand what a compiled list, which is generally going to be the most attractive price wise, what it allows you to do, which is it helps you save time in areas where you don't have as much information. So if that's the first one, here's a second list. So again, this first group is all about the different types of lists. Our next most popular list, our response list, our subscriber list, right? So these are only the people that have shared information with various organizations over time. It was just in the news that MasterCard and Google are getting together and sharing some information to, to, uh, across their different platforms so that they can match up purchasing behavior. So if I have in-store purchasing behavior, I use my MasterCard at my local bodega. And then uh, that information gets fed, you know, in a, in a big group off to, uh, from MasterCard to Google, who can then share it. And uh, then people who are targeting, uh, who knows, active purchasers, <laughs> active bodega purchasers um, for whatever it is that you happen to be selling, uh, you can find that list. So, uh, or people who have responded to uh, particular offers, right? So maybe it's uh, not a matched list as much as it's a list where uh, other information has gone out. I was looking for you know, old response cards. Um, sometimes I just opened a, a fan the other day. We bought a fan um, for the kid's dorm and in the, when it pulls out, out fell that warranty card and it just, it still has all those questions. You know, how big is your household? How much money do you make? Uh, where do you live? Uh, fill all this out to get the one year warranty. I don't know what percentage of people still fill those things out, but I do know that when they are filled out, that information is generally compiled by giant companies um, like Axiom and then uh, parsed out to other lists so that you can get information. The, the, the difference between a compiled list and a response or a subscriber list is that it's only the responders who have shared information over time. So think of that if compiled lists are at the 5,000 foot level, looking down over the landscape, uh, subscriber lists are at the thousand foot level. Now what is different between the two lists is that subscriber lists tend not to be as accurate. Or if, they're, uh, if they claim 100% coverage, it's filled in with compiled information. So not every record has 100% of the information on it. Again, built to save you time. I'm trying to think if I have an example um, of that. Eh, you know, One of my good examples will actually come in the future. But um, if you know who you're targeting, so for instance, if we were targeting accountants and I can get a hold of the accounting today subscriber list, there's a chance between the two lists, between the compiled list and the subscriber list, that I'm going to get a better response from the subscriber list, mostly because I'm going to have more contacts inside of those firms based on who the people are. It doesn't mean that the list is necessarily more accurate. The firm may be the exact same, but there may be more depth in there. And if I'm trying to sell something to individual accountants, I may be more interested in uh, the multiple contacts. So again, uh, finding a way to cut through the marketplace. All lists are really designed to help you cut through the marketplace faster than you could do it uh, if you just went door to door, right? Okay. Jumping into number three. The next favorite list, uh, and I'm just working on this with an, uh, a company right now, is association and trade show lists, right? So these are uh, paid, but the good news is that most of these people generally have some affinity with the group so that you can use the group as a reason to get in the door. So if I'm trying to use these lists better, if I join the Chamber of Commerce and uh, somebody else is part of, let's see what I see, Arvada Chamber of Commerce, I've got the Arvada. Chamber of Commerce, just as a side note, I pulled this off of Google image searches. It looks like the flat, 
the flat logos are, are the way to go, right? So if you're going to be looking for, if you're redesigning your logo these days, it looks like the Chambers of Commerce, somebody got a hold of them and has sold them a lot of primary colored, almost like food colored uh, logos. But since we're all part of the same chamber by calling and uh, not only will the information be a little more accurate, but I also have a uh, name or a reason to call behind it. So the difference between an association trade show list and those response subscriber lists, as far as getting the most out of it, is look for ones where you can borrow the affinity. Using that previous example of the accounting today list, it's hard to, you know, if that's my introduction to somebody is, hey, we both subscribe to accounting today. That's, uh, there's probably less affinity there than uh, we're both part of the South Suburban Chamber uh, you know, are you going to be going to events? Because if you are, I'm going to be there too. So we should be nice to each other. Um, moving through there. So marketing through trade shows, that's, that's uh, 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 the best way to use those lists. Again, uh, compared to, so if compiled lists are, are as, uh, as comprehensive as they, uh, as they can be at 5,000 feet, response subscriber lists are more that 1,000 foot level, but there's gaps. Um, they just, but you can see more in depth. You can see uh, what kind of car they're driving. Association trade show lists are even smaller, but um, come with the uh, ability maybe to, uh, to to use the name of the association inside there. So those would be the the three common types of lists and hints on how to get the most out of them. Look to compile lists when you're just trying to cut a market down or do market research. Look to subscriber lists when you need more in-depth information. Look for trade show lists when you need help with an introduction. So there you go. One, two, three. Jump into number four. Size matters, I say. So this is a, um, a, a way to use these lists. So, and this is a compiled list uh, story that I'm about to tell you. So in the compiled lists, um, one of the pieces of data that we used to collect, and, and this was certainly more important back then than it is for now, you can look for trends inside of your customer base. And one of the customer base indicators on business, business databases was the size of the ad that these people were running. So if we were trying to cut through an entire marketplace, um, so for instance, if I'm doing my, okay, so I'm gonna, so we're doing our own prospecting and we're prospecting using available, who is advertising, locally that has websites because we're going to do something that helps them improve their website. So I get the ad and then I go to look at the, at their website. Can we help them? Yes or no. Do they have a website? Yes or no. One of the indicators that is certainly, uh, it's an indicator that's fading away, but it's a good, a good story is the size of their ads. If they're investing money in the yellow pages, they probably have money to invest versus a company that doesn't. Another example might be um, in, in how to use lists is, uh, is bumping it up against other available information is looking to see who is hiring. So this is one that we've, we've messed around with for a long time, but it changes so quickly. Active hirers uh, tend to be growing versus people who haven't hired in a long time, their business may be more stagnant. So if that was important to your business and what you were selling, those would be indicators. Um, so maybe if you're selling business loans, you might look for people who have not been adding. Well, or maybe you'd look for uh, both. Um, you could go both directions on that. But inside of these lists, the data elements, every data element, if you look at it, you're, you should be curious as to what that indicates, why it's on the database, what it indicates, and if that applies to your business. So Oh, and actually, now that I look at that corner, it looks like that ad is from Australia. So that's a Yellow Pages in Australia. Australia, I don't know if you're listening, but are you guys still buying Yellow Page ads? There's a, there's a new thing. The internet's out there. How about this? Wait, you too. Here's uh, tip number five for getting the most for lists. Um, look for lists from companies that sell the same thing or sell something to the same audience that you're looking for. So... In this case, uh, a piece a customer has a piece of software, and, and this software is um, a live agent. Um, it, it takes your information, so it's listening to both sides of a conversation, and it's going through instead of having you uh, the the telemarketer or whoever is using the phone, instead of them having to click through Salesforce and get to the uh, the right prompt, 
you know, the right answer to the question, the, the right technical support screen, the, uh, I sell a new piece of software and this piece of software listens to both sides of the conversation and prompts me based on that. So it says, oh, you're talking about uh, Google Analytics. Here's what we know about Google Analytics. You could go there. Well, one place you could go look for that, right, is the first thing I need for this software to work is in my qualification list. So if I'm doing lead generation for my company, one of the first things I'm looking for is do they have a soft phone? Because if they have an old rotary dialer, I can't help them. I need my software needs to be able to tie into the, the IP. And then um, they need to be using actively using a soft phone so that the robot can hear both ends of the conversation. So this is what a, a call center with some soft phone. I, I don't think there's soft phones on there, but uh, that's what a, that soft thing on the end is, a soft phone. Um, a target list is anybody who buys soft phones, right? So those can be uh, either purchased or shared, but you need to be able to approach the people who have those things and be willing to invest. Compared to a compiled list, a subscriber list, or an association or a trade show list, companies that have the, the same lists you do, or are at least working the same compiled response subscriber or association trade show lists as you are, and can give you information on whether or not uh, there is a smartphone present, yes or no, right? You can share that information back with them, they can share it with you, and both can save a ton of time. So this example that I use is actually, um, it's under wraps, but it is a new company that's coming up. So if you happen to be in this space um, where you use soft phones for your agents, either in collections or, uh, I forget what the other, the other market, they were going after collections and they were going after, um, oh, uh, help desk tech support. Um, if you work in any of those markets, if either one of those markets are yours, let me know and I'll introduce you to these guys who are making this software. But um, that's, this is what we help them with is, in addition to pulling these broad lists, which are helpful, in addition to using LinkedIn, in addition to doing all these other things you're doing, um, let's also go hunting around and see if we can't find some other lists to bump into. And uh, they've had success with that. Number six, what are we on here? Number six, way number six is the robots. All right, so Facebook, I think that's, that's Google. And that's LinkedIn. Um, you need some budget for this, but one of the things with your lists is when you're targeting your lists, you can plug it into these audiences. Okay, I put this list on there because this is one thing that we have been messing around with, but um, I gotta check the terms and conditions. So this is top secret if you're, if you're listening, uh, terms and conditions people. Uh, let me know. But while we're targeting our audience and we are grabbing them, we could, those databases are huge, but we don't have access to everything that's inside of Facebook. But what but the Facebook robot does, and the same thing with Google. So we just uh, bumped into a, an issue with this. By the way, if you do anything with Google and they're targeting that conservative automation, yeah, watch out. Because uh, if, you, if you're not careful, it'll ram right through your budget. So we had to use no automated targeting. And then on um, LinkedIn, they do the matched audiences too, but they can learn who it is that you are targeting and then they can find people who look just like you. So um, use lists, the, the value of lists inside of your company, the value of lists that you've purchased and you're integrating inside your company is that you can share them with these networks that have even broader audiences and their AI, their robots, their uh, machine learning will help you find new things in there. So that's way number six to get more out of your robots. I'm moving, I'm conscious of time here. So, if, and again, if you have any questions, stick them in the chat and I'll get to them at the very end. All right, so way number seven is uh, appending emails. Um, to take advantage of these things, uh, one of the ways for you to do it is that unfortunately most of these networks they don't have like it's hard for them to match on address it's hard for them to match because most people have used email to sign up and then once they've used email to sign up they use like facebook to sign up on every other website so if we can take your information and then we can append our information on top of it you now have enhanced data right facebook linkedin and google 
since they match on those. So to take advantage of the robots, one of the things that uh, you can do internally on your database to get more from it, and this is, again, your database, is add information. Find the matches in the data that we have, get those email addresses, and then you can, append, you can write opt-in for those people that you don't already have email information on. People who were in business you know, over 10 years, some of the older data may not have email addresses and you need to dig it up. Or you know, maybe you're like us and you've been doing it for 20 years and they're still, I wanna say I bumped into, it wasn't Earthlink. I bumped into the oldest email address I think that's out there, it's older than AOL. And, uh, and it, was still, it was still working, still delivering. So who knows? But that's the, the thing we need to do is uh, so many services use emails to match on that it should be on 100% of your file and then encourage your people obviously to pick those up um, internally. Speaking of inside, so right now we're in data append stories. The inside list, your internal database is where a lot of the best information while people are buying information from us, if you have access to an internal database, if you have access to your information, um, even if you don't have access, if you can get access to more of it. I was, we were working with the car dealer and, oh, we have all that information, but it's in, you know, Reynolds and Reynolds. It's in our like finance database and the finance people didn't want to let any of this stuff go. Well, that's where all the good information was for the sales team. So as a matter of fact, here's the way to think about it is I was working with the company and they have uh, 3000 uh, customers and it's a little bit more than that, but let's just say 3000 that are, active that they need to keep in touch with and they have the top 300. And so they say, Greg, these are our top 300 based on revenue and this is what we do with them. And my question to them was, well, uh, how many of people inside your database look just like the people that are your best customers? And it took a while to get them mentally ready for this, but once we were able to identify, we appended information onto their existing database, we then profiled those existing customers. And then we just looked at the rest of the database to find out of the 2,700, how many of them look like the 3,000 or the, the top 300, but they don't spend like them. And then the questions come up as to what do we do next? How do we make these, make these things happen? So the way to get the most from your inside list is sometimes to uh, see what the whole list has in common with your very best customers and then come up with a plan to market to them internally. This goes back to that thing that people say like, oh, the, uh, you know, it, it costs 10 times as much to sell to a new customer as to, as to make a new, an existing one happy, those sorts of things. It, it may cost less, but the investment, you should still think about making the same investment in there. It's uh, the advantage to all those other people is we were selling existing products that the top people were buying, but the bottom people are not buying to an audience that was already receptive to the company. So it's a, it was kind of a win-win world. We had, it, we weren't introducing services that have never been done before. We were introducing existing services to customers that just didn't buy them. And then they needed to be reintroduced to the company in many cases uh, who didn't know that this is what they did. We had to find new contacts. There was a lot of things that went on inside there. Take advantage of having your uh, inside list produce as much business for you as possible. All right, number nine, hold me back. Uh, data suppression. So we're in like our company itself. So what is data suppression? Data suppression is when we take like, you have a list of a thousand prospects and then you look at this, um, uh, if you could see my hands are moving back and forth as I try to come up with this, this word. We have our prospect world where we say all these companies kind of look like they should be doing business with us and there's 10,000 of those. But I already have 1,000 in there. And you know, I may have ones in my database that you don't even have, as a matter of fact. Um, so I just want the 9,000. So, so that is what I consider a data impression or suppression. And the reason it's important is because it obviously it saves you, right, it's, it saves you money and it saves you time because you don't have to sort through the information. Um, it, and then it also gives you something that you can, it gives you a thousand matches that you can append information to because you know it's an automatic match. Um, but then inside the 9,000, uh, 
it, it really gives you an idea of what the market looks like. So we're a company ourselves. So my example is uh, GoLeads, MNC Information Systems. We, we do a lot of inbound. And so that naturally means since we're mostly inbound people calling us, that means we don't take a lot of time to go out and penetrate the market. And we know that. Um, so a profile and suppression to us can often be very depressing when we see all the people out there that don't know who we are and haven't worked with us. But just knowing the market size helps us make plans. So like we did, right? Um, we decided that um, as we looked at that market and the more we debated about how to go after them and test marketed things, we decided, gosh, we're just gonna do more of what we like. And that's actually where Lead Gen Compass, the, the genesis of these, uh, of these webinars and then the new product that we're launching. That's where that came from is we were like, hey, you know what? There's this little thing that we do inside of our company for a couple of our uh, curious customers and we'd like to do it for more of them as opposed to going out and finding the, to use that example again, the 9,000 that have no idea who we are, we'll continue to let them find us. And then for the people that we've been working with, we're gonna see if, where we can add more value in there. So suppression, always be asking for it and uh, checking it against lists. And that applies to any list that you're looking at. Um, find ways to not hit the same people that you're already working with. Okay, and finally, a case for cost justifying, cost justifying any lists um, inside of an organization. And I didn't see this picture so carefully before. This is a, a salesforce.com uh, insight, right? So it's got, uh, it's looking at the integration with Outlook and Salesforce, but if any, a cold list, no matter what it is, is only as good as you make it. And what that means is uh, you need to add information to your list. Most CRMs are holding tons of information. The challenge is, is that they're holding tons of information that is useless and um, you know, long-term or for marketing. And then they're also holding information that is really hard to get out. So we say that when we approach any particular list and when we're investing in it, it's not what the list is today, but it's what the list is going to be tomorrow, right? So, because uh, inside information is always going to be way better than anything that we can get outside. So we add data to the list. Like, and again, I'll use Lead Gen Compass as an example. So in our testing, right, we, so when we started and looking at our list, we had to take our list. So we have our list, which is internal, which is the information that we, we require when you purchase from us, as well as any emails or things uh, when you were just being introduced to us. And then we've appended information that's in our database. So if you're a match inside of our database, you get things like if you're a business employee size and uh, the industries that you're in so that we can kind of profile based on that. But like lead gen compass, the things that we're selling, which are lead, like online lead generation oriented, a lot of that information was not on there. Specifically, like we didn't know anything about um, whether or not you have a website, whether or not you have analytics, social media activity, do you have salespeople? Um, you know, have you re responded to any of our surveys or any of our um, market research in the past? And some of that data is not that valuable right this second, but it becomes more valuable a year from now, right? It becomes more valuable two years from now. So knowing what the end looks like today, we can start collecting more information. So as we run these webinars, as we follow up with the people who will follow up with us, as the new people come aboard and we do the work that we want to do and have various people, and then there's, right, there's always going to be varying degrees of success. The more successful we are, and if, there can, if there's any correlation to industry, to uh, the number of years of business, to uh, you know, something a little more psychographic oriented. If you've ever taken the lead gen, uh, the, the Go Leads growth score test, there's, uh, uh, we had done a little test on, that's really like a, a temperament for growth. Um, if based on all of that information, we will go back, we know in a year, we will also go back in two years and we will take a look back and see what we can learn from all the information that's in there. So what starts out as a pretty raw list in two years becomes the thing that helps us separate ourselves and say, and, and in the end, right, the, everything that we're after saves us time, saves us money, um, generates more uh, income in the short term. So that's, uh, 
that's what we're after. <laughs> so there you go. Oh man, I'm right at it. 30 minutes. So these were my 10 ways to get more out of your, uh, out of, out of mailing lists, right? Uh, for the first three relate to the types of lists, knowing the difference between a compiled list, a subscriber or a, a responder list and associations or some sort of affinity lists helps when you're uh, making that investment and how to get the most out of it. When it comes to uh, customer profiling, looking at all the different data elements like size, um, trying to find other people who are working that same market as you are and uh, sharing information between each other to save time, that's weight you too. Um, and then um, looking for information inside of larger marketplaces, the robots, where the robots live, uh, the Facebooks, the LinkedIn's, the, um, the, the Googles requires a little bit of an investment in there, but at the same time, um, that's where you can find your customer profiling shortcuts, uh, quicker ways to revenue. And then uh, a pending information is lookalikes, right? Um, we need the, that, the robots need certain information in order to work, so append, and you need email addresses in the end, even though it's, everything's going on, everybody's going to Snapchat or whatever it is, um, email is still the killer app. Um, I saw a joke that was, uh, email is the killer app. And if you still need evidence, just look at basically everybody who gets in trouble anymore. It's like, oh, and their email showed. So obviously people are still using email. Um, the inside list, what you can do to your internal database um, in just profiling, applying some of these tricks internally can make you look like a hero inside your company. Um, hold me back, uh, suppressing information and then finding uh, not only holding it, like a lot of people ask us for suppression and then um, they do it just so that they can not purchase the information uh, twice, right? I, I already own this. I don't need these 5,000 records again, but it's it's surprising how many of them when I'm like, oh, do you want the information on the, the, the matches? Like, do you need the appended information? They say, no, um, I'd encourage you to take both and work with it. And then finally, the database, the databases, the lists are always gonna be what you make it. So start with what you think you might want in a future point of time. There's an exercise we go through that is related to in you know a few years, what do you see the industry doing? And then how do you see yourself fitting in that industry and providing value there? A question to ask yourself at that time is what kind of information would I like to have at that time? Because you can start collecting it today, even though you may not make the most of it until uh, tomorrow. Does that make sense? For sitting around and going through this with me, the uh, Human Beings Guide to Business Growth is uh, is all yours. And you'll get a copy of it when I send, I'll send a copy of the recording to you that usually comes out on the Monday after we, we finish these. And what it is, is it's just a book full of ideas on how to unleash uh, the power of your people for growth. So if you're in a marketing if you're on the marketing staff, it's a way to get, uh, to help you get your message through the people that you know best or that know the company best, the people that work there and get them to help you generate leads. If you're salespeople, it helps generate leads too. Um, and it's just a way of unlocking that the best way I know. Um, if you need good conversations between uh, the executive staff, the marketing staff and the sales teams, the, the perfect growth formula is designed for that. Um, it, it gives you a quick framework to work with them as you're building your business. And then Lead Gen Compass, we're going to invite this. So we are, uh, we're excited. We're just a couple weeks away from sending this out. You'll get an email. Uh, but right now you can be first on the list. So the first people that will actually take a look at the website are the people who've signed up on leadgencompass.com. Feel free to go there. Once again, if you need to reach us, my name is Greg Chambers. Um, contact me anytime, uh, goleads.com, leadgencompass.com, uh, the phone number, or you can uh, send an email to info at goleads.com and anybody on the team will get back to you. I'm checking, I'm checking. I've got <laughs> no chats that are answerable and no Q&As. If you don't have anything, it's, uh, I'm right at 34 minutes. Thank you for attending and I hope this helps you get more out of mailing lists. Thanks.